All right, so I think I just want to quickly revise the variation method. The three important theorems that we said is one is Euler theorem that is if you do a variation of psi tilde a psi tilde by psi tilde psi tilde for or for all psi tilde and this is very this is a loaded all means entire Hilbert space then the stationary it is of E tilde are the solutions of the Schrodinger equation. Okay, so that was the first theorem. This is I did not prove it. Uh, however, this proof is not very difficult. We can do at some point of time. The point is that because of this, it is actually impractical because we can't really scan uh, psi tilde over entire Hilbert space. Two. Then we said that given any psi tilde. it is always greater than or equal to E naught. So, let me write this E naught I equal to 0, 1, etcetera, where E 0 less than equal to E 1 less than equal to E 2 and so on. So, E 0 is the lowest of them. So, for any psi tilde, a psi tilde, so for any arbitrary psi tilde, it is always greater. So, even in a restricted space, so this I do not have to do all now, restricted space, the variation of E tilde provides an approximate solution. So, the minimum of E tilde is the best solution of under the variation. So, that is what So, for this restricted space, the minimum is the best solution. However, this best solution can keep changing because your space may keep changing. When I say restricted space, you may decide to have another one restricted space, I may have another restricted space. So, within that restricted space of variation, this is the best solution. So, this does not give, so there is nothing called a variational solution, that is a misnomer. Whenever you say this is the solution that is obtained by variation method, you have to also define what subspace of variation did you do, okay. So, that is important, otherwise it has no meaning. One of the restricted subspace that we decided, we actually discussed is a linear subspace of variation, where we have k number of basis or k number of known functions. Whenever we say basis, remember these are known functions. So, these are of course, Basis means not one electron function, these are the basis for the problem which means n electron function. So, for example, for a n electron uh, problem, they are Slater determinants. So, Slater determinants are a valid functions because they are anti symmetric, so they can form a basis. So, let us say I have a k number of basis uh, which is, uh, what is the uh, symbol that I used last time, can somebody tell me? B, D, D, huh? okay. So, D. Then if I take my psi tilde as a linear combination of this basis C i tilde D i, then my variation subspace is a linear subspace. So, so let us say i equal to uh, 0 to k minus 1 or 1 to k depending on how you want to write. So, variation is a k dimensional subspace. of d i. That is my subspace and the parameters are C t, C i tilde. The k C i tilde. So, again this, this is a linear subspace, but this can vary. There are two parameters. One is the value of k itself. Another is the basis itself. Again, 
So, same k dimensional subspace I can use a different basis. So, results will be somewhat different. However, if you take an infinite dimensional basis, then it does not matter what basis you use because infinite dimensional everything is exact. I hope you understand. I can choose any di if this k was infinity, which means it is actually spanning all subspace, then it does not matter because in infinite dimension any function as long as they are linearly independent, their combination is exact. So, their combination will provide you another basis, but not so for a finite basis. In fact, if it is infinite dimensional, this will actually go over to the theorem 1, which is the Euler variation, correct. So, that, that means essentially I will get exact results. So, then we said that this, the solution to this is an eigenvalue equation. where I consider a matrix of this H over this basis. So, I wrote down this C j tilde sum over j equal to E tilde C i tilde. So, this is what you get uh, by doing the process of variation. So, this is the parameter C i tilde which are obtained by solving this equation. If you, if you analyze this equation, it is a matrix eigenvalue equation. Remember, my Hamiltonian was an operator. However, when I take this integral of this Hamiltonian between this known basis di and dj, which are within this k dimensional, then what happens is that this becomes a number which depends on k number of i, k number of j. So, I can rearrange this as a matrix of h i j, where this is a row and this is a column. This becomes another column multiplied by number times the column. So, this becomes a, a typical matrix eigenvalue equation as if you notice matrix eigenvalue equation as a matrix times a column equal to number times a column, okay. However, if it is a k by k matrix, then it has k number of eigen solutions, not one. You have k number of eigen solutions. So, each of the eigen solutions I can write with some superscript. I, uh, each of the eigen solution I write with the subscript and basis comes in the superscript. So, I will get typically E i in the basis k. So, this is how I label my eigen solutions. So, these are my ith eigen value in the k dimensional basis. Of course, if the dimension is k, then your number of eigen values can be only k. So, 0, 1, 2 to k minus 1 in a k dimensional basis, okay. And then we noted that not only of course the rule 2 exists, which means the which means all these eigenvalues are certainly greater than or equal to E naught, but there is a further, there is a further this thing exists which says that any E i in a k dimensional basis is always greater than or E i tilde is always greater than or equal to actual E i. So, these eigen solutions which are approximate, they are not only greater than or equal to E naught, but they are actually greater than or equal to its corresponding exact eigen solution. So, this is a very nice theorem which gives you an upper bound for the excited state. We further noted a given E i tilde k plus 1 basis, which is generated by adding one member to the original k basis. Please remember, not a different k plus 1 is always less than or equal to E i in k basis. So, this is another theorem that we saw and each of them remains an upper bound. So, however, when they go down, they will never cross their own corresponding state. So, that is the meaning and this was actually uh, con was the content of the separation theorem by the McDonald, the reference to which I gave the physical review 1933 paper which says that between every two roots of the eigenvalue problem lies one exact solution.
So this was the content of the separation theorem. Actually, from there you can derive both of these that they will remain upper bound. And as you increase, actually, it is, as you increase the basis, it will keep on decreasing, but it will never cross this because of this theorem. And that was the content of the separation theorem. And and this is what we said. And this is a linear subspace is a very very important subspace. And in a way, if you remember, we looked at the form of the exact wave function. That was also a linear variation, a combination over determinants. So if you want to get those coefficients, we are actually going to use this eigenvalue equation. So this is how we will get the coefficient of expansion. Uh, did I also do the proof from here to here? So, so we just projected to a given di and we got the solution, okay. So I think that's, uh, that completes the, the variation method, whatever I did in overview. This is a very important method. So I think it is, uh, you know, more you talk about it, better it is. You, know, you are always going to gain. So remember, when you do Hartree-Fock, we are actually going to do a variation method, not the linear variation, of course. Linear variation is CI, configuration interaction. So when we, when we come back to our old problem, that we know that an exact wave function can be written as a linear combination of all determinants and of course we are talking of any electron determinants that can be formed from a complete set of one electron functions. Which are, which are basically spin orbitals, these functions are, can be spin orbitals. So they are very often called the spin orbitals, okay. So this is a statement which is basically, basically it says that it is the full configuration interaction. So please understand the statement. I have first a one electron functions which are the basis of one electron problem. So it can be any one electron problem because you remember the Hermitian uh, operator eigenfunctions are always complete set. So I can take any one electron problem. Note also that I am not explicitly stating but these functions are all orthonormal because they are, they will usually come from the Hermitian operators. These bases are also orthonormal similarly. So everything is an orthonormal basis that we are talking right now. So what we are saying that from this one electron basis, you form first for any electron all determinants. So of course, this complete set is usually infinity again, but let us say that we have a, a pseudo complete set which are m in number. So the spin orbitals are m in numbers. So then we can generate total number of determinants. We have already seen this which are mcn, okay. These mcn determinants are now the basis for the n electron problem. So again, please distinguish the, the basis that we are talking of. We have a one electron basis. This is a one electron basis. And these are n electron bases. Quite, quite obvious because this is only one electron. It's a one function, so n electrons cannot be put there. Here it's a determinant, so I have n spin orbitals and I can put n electrons. Pauli principle or the anti-symmetry forbids me to put n electrons in one, one orbital. So of course I need n and that has to be a determinant. So these determinants are now n electron function and quite clearly they are the basis for the n electron problem. So if you want to do a CI for the n electron like this, these GIs must be determinants built out of some one electron function, does not matter which. What I am now saying that if you take them all, it is a full CI within this m, m dimensional basis. This, of course, if m goes to infinity, it will become exact. So we also define full CI even if it is not exact. That is full CI in a restricted space. The question that I am now asking is that this is far too complicated because you have so many determinants out of this basis. 
So, can I identify one single determinant out of this MCN which is very good and how do I get that? So, that is the question that we are going to ask. As I said, this is what the chemists want that a, that a picture of an N electron in one determinant, represented in one determinant. So, how do I get that determinant? So, this is the question that we asked in the Hartree-Fock problem. Okay, so I think the I hope the problem statement is first clear. So, what are you looking at Hartree-Fock? So, let me first write down the Hartree-Fock theory, the statement of the problem. So, we want so we want to get one determinant now. So, our site tilde cannot be linear combination of a determinant, but it has to be only one determinant. So, obviously one determinant will have one n set of spin orbitals, right. So, let us call this chi 1 tilde, chi 2 tilde, chi 3 tilde and so on, 2 chi n tilde. I am calling this tilde because right now I do not know their solutions. So, they are trial solutions with the and this is a shorthand notation for the n uh, electron determinant. It is actually a determinant n by n determinant. I hope all of you can write it each row has a spin orbital, each column has a coordinate of the electron or vice versa, but that is the first one is what we are following. So, now we are saying that obviously, if I know the basis, given basis, th this problem does not exist because if I know the basis, what am I doing? So, in fact, the, this problem is actually to find this basis. This complete, this one electron basis that we are talking of, it is not going to be complete of course but at least n of them I want to find such that this determinant is the best determinant, which essentially now means through the variation method that this will be the minimum. Because we know in the variation method that it is always greater than or equal to E naught. So, uh, for the ground state at least, so this is the, let me also specifically write that we are looking at only ground state now is very, very tough to do excited state Hartree fog incidentally. So, it is a hard ground state because we are not doing linear space. Remember excited state comes on a linear variation. This is no longer linear variation and hence to get excited state is much more difficult. I will come back to this point. So, it is a minimum with respect to my variation of chi 1 tilde, chi 2 tilde, etcetera to chi n. So, if you look at this problem, this problem is actually to find this basis, this one electron basis. What are the spin orbitals? So, the question that you are asking, what n spin orbitals will give you a determinant? Of course, n spin orbitals can give you only one determinant. What n spin orbitals will give you one determinant which will produce the lowest energy within all other such n, n, n set? So, I, I keep on changing this n set, which n set gives you the lowest because I, I need one determinant only. So, I do not need anything more than n spin orbitals, remember, but I do not know which n spin orbitals. So, I do not need the capital M here, like here there is a capital M, I do not need that, I need only n, but which n will give me the lowest. So, here actually the problem is to find this basis, the one electron basis from where we should start. In fact, this will become the Hartree-Fock basis from where we will start doing CI later because that is already a good basis, okay. So, we first want to find out this basis so that this arbitrariness later will also go. We will know which basis to start with. So, what she is asking is a very good question. It is a research problem actually. Why do you do an energy variation? Can't you look at another property to be a better, better uh, tool? So, let us say I am not interested in energy. I am interested in dipole moment. Can I get a wave function which is single determinant which will give me the best dipole moment? Unfortunately, there is no variation principle with dipole moment. Okay. So, that is the problem. So, but people have still tried the problem with the constraint variation. I will come back that later, but that is what the question that she is asking that can I, why, why you are bothered about only goodness of energy? That is essentially the question that you are asking, right? Why not goodness of some other property? For one, I do not have a variation principle for some other property. Second is that energy is most important, I mean, whatever it thermodynamics, okay. I have to say the thermal, but for a specific problem, maybe dipole moment may be important, but in general energy is more important that you will agree because you want equilibrium structure that is based on energy, right. 
So you want interaction energy, that is also based on energy, you want spectroscopy, that is also energy, alright. So, so what we need to do now is to simplify this problem. First of all, let us assume as before that my n spin orbital that is chi 1 tilde, chi 2 tilde, etc., up to chi n tilde are orthonormal, that is very important. So this is the only condition I am putting, the, the condition I am putting is only to make this denominator 1. If you start with an orthonormal basis and then if I represent this psi tilde as chi 1 tilde, chi 2 tilde, chi n tilde, then one can show that this psi tilde, psi tilde is equal to 1. So if, if these are orthonormal and this is my determinant then psi tilde psi tilde equal to 1. So this is a simplification that I am going to apply. So my E tilde in that case will simply become psi tilde H psi tilde, alright, because that denominator goes up. However, to knock off the denominator, I have to remember that as you are changing your spin orbitals, they must remain orthonormal, otherwise this condition is gone, right. So let me again restate the problem. So I want to minimize E tilde subject to a condition, subject to a condition that all my chi i tilde, chi j tilde is equal to delta i j for all i j. All i j of course within 1 to n, that is clear, I am only looking at n spin orbitals right now. So this makes sure that they are orthonormal. So basically that becomes a, a, a more refined statement simply because I do not want to work with the denominator, otherwise this was good statement, there is no problem with this statement. So this statement is now revised that I have only a numerator which I want to minimize subject to the fact that these spin orbitals must be orthonormal, is it okay? It is the same statement actually, the, so you must, must be convinced that these are two same statements, it is just that with this condition I have ensured that the denominator is 1, if you do not use then you must have the denominator here, the nothing will change, no physics will change. But this is just for uh, simplicity that I would like to minimize this subject to this delta H. So this becomes mathematically the Hartree-Fock problem. The physically the Hartree-Fock problem is to choose a set of n spin orbitals which gives you a best description of a determinant. So to a chemist you can go with that determinant because chemist is not interested in that full CI, MCN. You can at least go with one determinant, so this is what the lithium 1 s square. So we cannot do this, so that is the physics, that what, why am I trying to do it? So please try to understand. I am trying to do because a single determinant is a nice chemist description. So I want to bring a single determinant, which single determinant? That is the question, because single determinant has n spin orbitals. I can take any n spin orbitals. How do you know that is the best description? So that is where the Hartree and Fock, that is the question that Hartree and Fock try to answer. Then the mathematically Hartree Fock method turns out to be just this, this line, that is the mathematics. If you have understood the physics, mathematically I can say minimize this quantity where psi tilde is this determinant subject to this. Is it clear? So I am going to use Lagrange variation and all that, we will do that, I will come down to that later. But even before, so once you understand that the physics and the mathematics, these two you must go together, okay. Once you understand that, then I still have a problem. What is this? In terms of this chi tilde, because this is a monstrous thing on the left and the right, it is a determinant, yes. Yeah, so that is the result that you will get, that is the outcome. A 1 by R12 is here in the Hamiltonian. So we will see that. No, 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 no. 1 by R12 is not, is not going to change. The equation that we will get for chi i will be an 1 electron equation where an average effect of 1 by Rij will come. Again, that is an outcome of the result. I am not going to make approximation. I am just going to do this. After that, I am going to get an equation, approximation is just here, 
H is full Hamiltonian. Yeah, 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 full, full Hamiltonian. After the minimization, I will get a Hartree-Fock equation. So the, the statement that I made was an analysis of that equation, okay, that there is an average effect. So that you will see later, okay. So once again, let me go through this. There is no average effect here. Nein, nein. No, 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 that was also respect to psi only, na? single determinant. This is Hamiltonian, na? this is an electron problem. So, the Hamiltonian cannot change. What you are talking is the one electron equation that I will get. After this, I will get a one electron equation to obtain chi i's. So, there, how does 1 by rij come in that one electron problem is what I, you are discussing. So, this will come later after I solve this problem. So, there I did not solve this problem, I, I finally gave the equation, right. So, I already analyzed the equation. Here I am going to first derive the equation, then analyze, okay. That was non-interactive. After that, when there is interacting, you, I said that you cannot have a single determinant. So, you have a full CI. Yet, I want a single determinant. So, how do I get it by minimize? So, now whatever you have learnt in 4 to 5 will come. So, just hold on. But, but look at the broad picture. If I have just h of h is some h of 1 plus h of 2, I do not need it because that is a trivial solution. My single determinant chi 1 chi 2 is just the solution of h. So, I have solved the problem. So, there is nothing to do. If there is a 1 by r 1 2, then of course, the exact solution is full CI, always. However, I still want a single determinant, so two electron single determinant. So, if you are talking of two electron problem, I want a chi, chi 1 chi 2, which chi 1 chi 2, how do I know? So, that is what I am trying to prove. There I, I told you the equation of chi 1 and chi 2 and in that equation, there was a one particle operator, Fock operator. So, that I interpreted as an average of, so that in, that is not an approximation. That is an interpretation of this approximation, you can say that way. Approximation is this, that I am trying to do single determinant. So, that will be an interpretation of the approximation, but the interpretation I can do only when I get the results. So, there of course, Hartree Fock I covered in just one or two lectures, okay. So, I had to, I did not go through this. So, this whatever you are telling will come quite late now, because I am going to go through the derivation. This, this class I am going to go through the actual derivation, not just give you the results. So, that was a one particle equation. This is completely n particle. But after minimization, I will get this one particle equation, which is what you are referring to, okay. So, that will come much later, all right. So, before you do that, I have a small technical issue to discuss. How do I calculate this? So, how do I calculate this in terms of chi 1, chi 2 to chi n? Because my basic variables now are not psi tilde. What are my basic variables? chi 1, chi 2 to chi n. So, unless I write e tilde in terms of chi 1, chi 2 to chi n, I cannot start the variation process. So, that is a little mathematics. Again, I will, I will uh, not do the mathematics, but I will simply, so, so what I have to do is to actually find out this quantity, psi tilde h psi tilde in terms of chi 1.